Rock's Classic Rock, Q1043. Well, I want to introduce you to someone who really needs no introduction. Jane Seymour is an absolute icon. I am a huge fan. And uh, what I didn't realize is that you're an OBE winner, office officer of the British Empire, bestowed by none other than the Queen of England. And of course, we are well aware of your acting abilities. You're an Emmy and Golden Globe winner, but that's not why you're here today. The reason Jane Seymour is gracing, uh, gracing us with her beauty and her talents is that she has a talent many of us are unaware of, which is she's an artist. And you can actually come and meet Jane Seymour today in Stone Harbor. She has an exhibit of her artwork. And uh, yeah, so this is in Stone Harbor today. And what is the name of the art gallery? Ocean Galleries. The Ocean Galleries in Stone Harbor. So how do we not know of your <laughs> art ability and what is your art ability? Are you a painter? Do you draw what? Well, actually, um, I think a lot of people know about the open heart, you know, the, the jewelry that I did and uh, the two hearts that connect. In fact, I'm wearing a scarf right now with from the original artwork. That's peace, love and an open heart. I don't know if you can see that. Always trying to get peace in the world, especially right now. So, um, I have been painting since I was a kid. I've been painting professionally and showing for the last 30 years. I've showed at the Butler Institute of American Art at the Women's um, Museum in, uh, in DC. The, uh, the Guggenheim actually was the first place. They showed some of my pieces when I did some of my first paintings for a Discover card. Um, when they decided they didn't just want numbers on it, they asked uh, Ringo Starr, uh, Florence Joyner and myself to come up with images and we and I sold mine for uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. So I've been painting pretty seriously now the last 30 years. I also sculpt, I do monumental sculptures in bronze as well. Um, and uh, it's always been a, a passion of mine, but it's really something I've always done for me. And I never imagined that it'd be something that other people would want, but I have been showing now for the last 30 years. And uh, this particular show um, in Ocean Galleries is, is amazing because they have 127 pieces of my art there, wow. which is a huge collection. And there's a retrospective in there too. So if you wanted to see my earlier work, there'll be some of that there all the way through to you know, current work. Um, sometimes you know I make uh, scarves, art to wear or pajamas and things. If you go on janeseymour.com, you can see that I, I do those there. So the original artwork for those uh, textiles, it will be at the gallery. And um, yes, I mean, I, I, art has been my passion forever. It, it's what I would have done if I hadn't been an actress, but um, I've, I've been doing it concurrently and I've always been a designer. I've always uh, done this. I, in fact, I had my first company uh, designing and making and embroidering clothes when I was 15. Huh. So you may ask why am I an actress? That would be actually more appropriate. That's but. true. Why did you go into acting? And you became, you had your first professional job at 18, right? No, my first professional job, I think I was 13. Oh my God. 13, yes. Yes. And I, and I was of course in the professional in the Nutcracker with the London Festival Ballet. I used to be a ballerina. And I danced with the Kirov Ballet, now the Marinsky, when they came to England a long time ago. In uh, they were called the time in in uh, uh, the Royal Opera House. And then I injured myself, became an actress by default. Uh, played a dancer in a movie, was a, a, a singer and dancer in Richard Attenborough's first movie. Got spotted by the top agent in England, um, dancing and uh, having one line behind Maggie Smith in a chorus, and uh, that was it. So yeah. So I've been dancing and acting ever since. And if you actually, one of my fans did the most amazing thing. I didn't realize it, but they made clips of every time I dance in every movie I've ever done or television show. And pretty much everything I've ever been in, at some point, I break into a dance. At some point. So, <laughs> so uh, to say I quit dancing would be a lie. I mean, I danced in Lassiter with Tom Selleck. I, Obviously, Dr. Quinn, I had to dance with Joe Lando and um, 
and uh, you know, and, and sort of every period piece, you always had to do a minuet or a waltz or something. And then I did Dancing with the Stars. Um, but when I paint, which is why I'm, we're talking here, I found that when I paint, it's almost like I'm dancing. It's like um, I, I move with the brush or the or the palette knife across across the canvas, and especially the watercolors, I let them sort of flow and uh, run into one another, and then I just discover what they are afterwards and bring them out. So it, it, I have a lot of different techniques. I paint very impressionist. I paint um, some abstract, but uh, when I do abstract, it's you. It's relatable to, to being a subject. Uh, it's not completely abstract. What time will you actually be there yourself today at Ocean Galleries in Stone Harbor? Well, I have... I am praying that I will actually be able to physically be there now, but I just tested the other day for COVID. Oh, I'm First sorry. First time in all three years. So, uh, but I'm, as you can tell, I'm feeling absolutely fine. And I have a feeling that um, I found out about it quite late in the process. So I am still hoping to physically be there, but I will definitely be there um, for three hours live by Zoom, regardless. I am okay. not leaving myself. So what time though? What day, time? I will be one one-to-one -one with anyone that wants to talk to me, ask me questions, go through the gallery and whatever. They're, but I'm praying and hoping I'm physically there because I want well, to be. What is the time frame? What is the time frame? Um, well, I that I might well be hopefully better by then. The, no, the no, 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 no. The show. time of day. The time of day. Oh, oh, the, the show, I think, is 12 to 3. Is that correct? I don't want to get it wrong. Okay. Okay. I, I did better check you that one. I haven't got it in front of me, but I believe that's what it is. Okay. The, the, I, however, uh, artwork is there now, and it will be shown there till the tenth. So you know, if you don't have a chance to go on Sunday, um, it is it it will be showing from now on. There are actually a couple of of shows um, uh, before that as well, and there will be, and it will be the whole gallery is hung. There's 127 pieces, including four of them that are collaborations with my son, who's a fine art photographer where I danced for him and he photographed me. So oh, they're really wonderful. Yeah. I'm speaking, I'm speaking with Jane Seymour. Yes, the Jane Seymour. And uh, her artwork is on display at Ocean Galleries in Stone Harbor, which is way down the shore. Yes, in New Jersey, it's closer actually to Atlantic City uh, than it is to us, but well worth the trip to uh, look at her artwork. And she will be there in some way, shape or form later on today because she tested positive for COVID. So if she's not there in person, which which were her, which was her plan. She will be there by Zoom. Yes, and um, so I have some other things I wanted to ask you about, okay. Jane. Of course, you became like globally known it, through the James Bond movie *Live and Let Die*. What are your feelings about who should be the next James Bond? There's a lot of talk of Idris Elba that being his role. Do you have any feelings about this? My feelings are that uh, Barbara Broccoli and her team have always picked the perfect bond for that era. You know, in my era in the 70s, um, Roger Moore was perfect. And before that, Sean Connery. And I think Pierce did a great job. And Daniel Craig. It's amazing. So I, I'm, I, I, I trust her implicitly. And uh, I, you know, the, the actual bond stories as written by Ian Fleming, they ran out of those a long time ago. So now, you know, basically... Uh, they can do whatever they like with it. I mean, it, it's it's a spy story. And uh, but I think what's interesting about the James Bond series is that they have always related to the culture of that time. And so whereas some might not be appropriate to do today, you know, they were very appropriate to do then. And and, you know, so they, they'll they'll find what's right for now. Okay, you have a huge tie to the music world in that you once owned an estate near Bath and a number of artists recorded there. Radiohead recorded OK Computer there. The Cure recorded there. Johnny Cash recorded there. Is it true that Duran Duran broke up there? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, well, we didn't have Zoom in those days, but uh, Simon Le Bon and Andy Taylor were there in the room with me and they were on the phone endlessly trying to figure out whether they could keep it together or not. 
And um, I'm sadly uh, that band broke up whilst I was I was right there. Um, Johnny Cash uh, was there. He was our closest friend. Um, he was on on Dr. Quinn three times, and um, we um, we worked my ex husband and I, James Keach, on we created Walk the Line with Johnny, and then of course. Um, um, it got directed by uh, James Mangold and was brilliant, but we worked on that for 11 years. So J uh, Johnny used to come down there and stay. Um, uh, John Barry, the composer, loved that house. Um, S Club 7 rehearsed there. Robbie Williams was there. Jerry Halliwell. Um, the London Chamber Orchestra used to rehearse there. We had the best sound in England in this was supposed to be like they call it the drawing room but we called it the ballroom and I remember John Barry saying to me you don't understand but this is the greatest sound in the whole of England better than anywhere any anywhere at all it's got four second reverberation he said it's unbelievable and so um it, it sort of became like a mecca for um for, for musicians because they would rent the house for me stay there record and uh and of course the you know as you said uh, okay computer um, it was, you know, Radiohead, it was unbelievable. I mean, that that's considered one of the greatest albums of all time, of its genre. So, and, and my, my son's a, a rock musician. So, you know, I, he, he's very excited to be able to say that they were at our house. Yeah, that was an awesome, awesome album. All right. I have another question on a completely different topic. Your father was a really renowned um, gynecologist and obstetrician in England, considering the Supreme Court ruling that came down, and you are a naturalized U.S. citizen now, do you have strong feelings one way or the other on the issue of abortion and the U.S. Supreme Court decision, considering, you know, your father and, and how mm. you grew up? Well, you know, my father's specialty was fertility and mm. infertility. And, and I know when I was growing up, he would tell me terribly tragic stories of, of uh, there was one girl who was consistently raped from the time she was 12 or 13. And every time she would get pregnant and she was mentally, you know, mentally challenged and there was nothing anyone could do, you know. And, um, and so I, I think there are, you know, obviously there are times when uh, I'm a woman, I, I, I feel like, the Supreme Court shouldn't dictate what I do with my body. But, uh, you know, I, I think everything's been turned black and white and it, it, there are um, sensible elements of gray there that would make a lot of sense for, for everyone on the planet if we could have that, you know. It, it's, it's not political to me. To me, this is, um, you know, it's about a, a woman's rights. I mean, I, I also, you know, there are women who, who get pregnant and will probably die if they had the baby because they can't carry the baby. I mean, I've had preeclampsia myself. I nearly, I nearly died from having twins. So um, I don't know. I, I, I obviously have, have feelings, but I tend not to get into the politics of it. And I wish this was not a political issue. I suppose that's what I really want to say. We only have a minute and a half left. I wanted to ask you about a movie that I think came out this week in Australia called Ruby's Choice, where you play a woman with Alzheimer's. Are we ever going to get to see this movie, Jane Seymour? I hope so. It, um, I got rave reviews for it. I have won some awards in it, won some awards recently. Um, they're trying to get distribution here in um, America and the rest of the world. It's already shown in Australia. It's, it's opening now in New Zealand. I'm very, very proud of it. We made it during COVID. It was very hard to, to make under those circumstances. And, uh, and it, it's um, everyone I've sh who's seen it, uh, it was showed at the Santa Barbara Film Festival. People went crazy about it. I believe it's going to show, I'm hoping in the Dallas Film Festival. Um, anyone that I know that's been in that world or affected by it has just gone, oh my God, this is the movie. And uh, I'm really, really proud of it. It was written by a, a man who has been working in that field for 30 years. So it's totally authentic. Um, it's about, you know, an average Australian family who don't have any money and are just trying to struggle to do the right thing for mum. And, and what's wonderful about it, when I, I watched it in audience, is it's not a downer. It's people are laughing out loud and huh. they're crying at the same time. Because this woman, Ruby, 
you know, inadvertently solves everyone's elephant in the room issue while, while she's on her, her path of decline. And it, ultimately it's about her choice, her choice of how she wants to live and where and when and how. And, um, and it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful movie. I, I also, um, Harry Wilde, which you can see, is out on Acorn right now. And um, that's been the, the best thing I've done in a very long time. It's gotten great, great reviews everywhere. It's showing all over the world now, it's sold all over. And it was number one at Acorn, so much so that they've just um, asked me to do series two. So uh, if you haven't seen that yet, you'll love that. I play a, an English professor in Dublin University who um, quits because she's a rather independent, irascible lady and uh, can't be bothered to, um, to teach to people that would rather get high and not show up. So she ends up inadvertently becoming a very good detective using her knowledge of history and English literature. Awesome. It's, awesome. I'm it's sorry. We're, we're, we're out of yeah. time. We're okay. out of time. Uh, again, you can see Jane Seymour either by Zoom or live later on today at Ocean's Galleries in Stone Harbor. And coming up next, I will be speaking with the president and CEO of the Ms. Foundation. That's coming up next. Q104.3. New York's classic rock. Q104.3.